Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Puffco Budgie Bottle and G-Pen Connect Diamond Dab of the Day. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Run down the street. Tell your friends to join Senior Stoner on YouTube. Send a like, and I reply to all the comments. Let's get started on today's topic. Well, many of you, if not all of you, know that I live in chronic and tractable pain. Not fun. But there are a lot of pitfalls and mistakes that chronic pain people can avoid. I want to try to help you, every one of us. Because there's no doubt that entering the world of chronic pain is a confusing and difficult process for anyone. Often, people just don't understand the basics of pain management with long-term care. But helping patients to become aware of various potential problems and mistakes ahead of time will help us all respond better and differently and learn how to become a better part of the solution to our chronic pain. Let's discuss how knowledge is power and will help reduce what may appear to be a very difficult situation. Well, there's no question that living in chronic pain is very difficult and exhausting. In fact, Pain upsets and destroys the person who feels it, truly. However, there are some very important factors that we have to think about relative to learning how to cope and manage chronic pain. Some of those ideas are unique in different ways to help us think about the situation, on how it's going to help or hinder our progress in managing our pain. Let's discuss the mistakes and pitfalls that people in pain make. Well, many times patients want to chase their pain with more and more pain medicine, only to find that the medications are no longer as effective, even at higher doses. Medications are helpful, but it all depends on how we use them and what we expect from them. Not understanding that pain medications will typically help with only about 50 or 60% of the pain ruins everything because you're chasing something you're never going to get. So what has to happen is we've got to employ other self-care techniques to help us manage the pain over time. We cannot just rely on the medicines or keep hoping that we can continue the dosage and grow it until we finally block the pain. That ain't going to happen. So we have to learn to live with a certain amount of pain and accept that fact as life. I know, right? A lot of times, folks try to use pain medicine to do more and get through events or projects. All that's going to do is ensure that we'll crash and have more problems later. It's critical that we learn to pace ourselves in our activities by accepting that we are limited and now we need to make adjustments, particularly true of patients who have just had surgery. Think about it, or physical therapy or even biofeedback techniques. We tend to move too fast in getting back to doing more activities, chores at home, returning to work too soon. And we feel that our old selves only end up feeling worse because of what we've done. In other words, there can be a flare up in pain and then panic while feeling like we have to try even harder. One has to recognize that there's a new start possibility in life not one that is expected or desired, but one that is forced upon people with chronic pain. <laughs> Medications are always best taken on a time contingent basis. 
In other words, regular by the clock. And if you are to have the best results with your medicines, take them as prescribed, not just when you feel you need them. Taking more pain medicine at times of pain flare-ups and then running out of medicine later is a huge problem. After a while, we will have more pain because our body will depend on the medicines being there to handle the difficult times. It's called a rebound effect. It's going to occur when we have more pain if we don't take the medicine. And if we keep increasing the medicine to get through the bad times, there's a likelihood, believe it or not, of more and more and more flare-ups over time. It's unbelievably frustrating, but it's true. You cannot wait until the last minute to get your physician to fill your prescription. And then you freak out because it's not done on time. That will only increase tensions between you and your providers. You got to have a regular plan for how you handle getting refills. Don't wait until Friday, the weekends, or the evenings. A lot of people in pain, chronic pain, want things to be the way it was before the chronic pain, injury, or problem. Eh. Everything has changed now. And we have to work on grieving. That's right, grieving over our past abilities. And then moving on to find new ways of living. We have our new capabilities as they are now whatever they are. So being more realistic about what we can do and what we cannot do is critically important. People are always trying to get everything done when they're feeling good because you know you'll feel bad later. Well, guess what? This ensures that you'll have even more bad times, more pain, more up and down with the pain problems. What about people who forget to take a break, forget to change positions, or do something different, or just to rest? Well, that ensures <laughs> it's easy now to get away from you, and you have a few hours pass since you've moved or slowed down. But you know what? It can bite you in the ass. You cannot think for a moment, that your physicians will always understand your pain and be available whenever you need them. That is fantasy. We, you, I, me, are the only one who will really understand our pain problem and our needs. We can communicate them to our health care providers till we're blue in the face, but it is up to us, 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 to work out a realistic plan that will work for us and the practitioners. They are not omniscient. We cannot think that one thing will work to solve it all. In pain management, frankly, as in a lot of types of care, it is usually many things that you have to do to manage problems over time. You have to learn active self-care pain management skills. It's like learning a new language. It helps to work with a pain management professional, maybe even a pain management psychologist, because you know what? We can be taught new active self-care skills as a part of cognitive behavioral therapy. And that focuses on practical things that can work in everyday life. Because you see, thinking that it's all going to get better if I push more, and work more to get back where I was before. It's a huge mistake. Huge mistake. We can improve and become more functional. But now some things have changed. And we need to learn an entirely new way of handling things. We cannot avoid getting help from specialists. Specialists are there to help us learn active pain management skills and techniques because there are many things we can learn from professionals to help us manage and reduce our pain. The more we think relief only comes in the form of a pill,
the more problems we're going to have over time. A lot of people think that they can't have a life if they continue to live in pain. Almost 50 years living in pain. I have a life, don't I? Not good. Many people, many people have chronic contractible pain and go on with their lives. That's right. All of us, all many of us can also, even though it's not going to be easy, it requires positive and realistic thinking. And frankly, those who do better have found to have accepted their pain and limitations, but nevertheless have decided to refocus and live life even with their limitations. You cannot let fear rule your life. Fear results in more anxiety and avoiding doing anything for fear that you will have more pain. And that's been found to lead to even more disability and more limitations over time. The center of the brain that controls pain is the same center of the brain where our moods, anxiety and depression are controlled. One can set off the other. So we truly need help dealing with that issue. It's critically important to know that pain medicines can have a rebound effect. The body becomes dependent on them. It's chemistry. And when we run low, we're going to have greater pain. Your blood level, the medicine in your blood, the medicine goes lower. It is just going to happen. So we have to understand patterns and how, when, and where problems impact our life. We have to remember that stress goes to the weakest identifiable part of the body. We have to remember that in a crisis, humans, we, we regress to previous level of emotional functioning and can feel sicker and more emotionally drained than we had ever thought possible. Well, progress can take time. More time than many of us expected. But the cure is inside of us. We just have to start to observe and pay attention. Work with the doctors, with our team of practitioners, whoever we have. Listen to our bodies. Listen to our brains. And for chronic pain, particularly chronic intractable pain, there just is no magical cure. It's dreaming the impossible dream. So, we're going to learn many new things and ways of helping ourselves over time. Pain medicines are helpful, but they're not the total answer. This has been the real senior stoner. Trying to help people in pain understand their pain and not make mistakes. You see, we all have, if you will, people in chronic intractable pain, we all have a similar set of problems in a general sense. Specifically, you, you, your pain might be in your ankle. My pain might be in my back. But we all understand what's going on. The body's a temple. Got to not abuse it. Thank you for joining me. This has been The Real Senior Stoner with the Puffco Budsy bottle and my G-Pen Connect with my diamond dab of the day. Cheers, everyone. And I truly hope you, we, all learn to understand our pain better and not make mistakes that many people do. Cheers. And thanks for joining me. Cheers. Have a great one, everybody.